RoboDub, Seattle, Washington. RoboDub addresses last mile delivery logistics with morphing drone technology. Meet Parmender Gebsi. RoboDub. Like, all right, good to have it. This is a drone Airbus has built to carry passengers. Imagine yourself in one of these going to work in Buffalo when one of the rotor fails and the drone starts to plummet. Scary, isn't it? Drone safety is a huge issue. So is efficiency. Companies like Amazon, Google, UPS, they want to deliver multiple packages in a single flight, but they can't do so. It makes their drone imbalance. We have built patented morphing drone technology that solves these problems. The drone that you see here, that can they'll fly even if it fail, the rotor fails. And secondly, we have ability to carry multiple packages by making sure that the drones remains balanced by articulating of the arms. This is the safest drone and the most efficient drone, period. We have the toughest customers in the world. We have Army, Navy, and Air Force. We have a $1.2 million in traction, and very recently, a $1 million contract has been awarded by the Army. RoboDub is a great fit for us. We'll do the manufacturing of drones right here. We plan to test our drones at the New York FAA testing facility. We have met with the CTO of Moog, George Small. I think we'll be great partners together. We will hire engineers from the University of Buffalo, and we will create about 25 to 30 jobs in first year. We are the only company in this competition that can bring in additional $1 million funding to Buffalo through our special contract with the US Air Force that provides matching funding. So I'm excited to be here, and thank you very much. Very good. Oren. Thanks, First up. Reminder, that's, that's a great product. When can I buy one? <laughs> well, in about six months, uh, it's going to be about ready, and it's going to take another six months when it's going to come out of factory. So pre-production six months, it's going to come out of factory a year. Is the factory in existence? So currently, we have been building in our own in-house shop, but we want to work in partnership with Moog that can build it on a scale. Okay. We have already been asked by certain high people in the Army to deliver like 1,000 drones. We just don't have the capability to do it. That's why we're excited about Buffalo could be a great fit for us. Thank you. Then Mark. So I'm curious about some of your military relationships. Um, there's various ways in which they engage with uh, potential vendors like yourself. In some cases, it's just like an RFP. In some cases, it's single source. But I was curious if you could talk to us about what types of relationships you have with the, the various military groups and where you might have closer relationships. Right. So currently, we have five contracts with Navy, Air Force, Special Operations Forces, and our Army. So Army is championing our technology. Tomorrow, they're going to use drones to transport supplies rather than using trucks, because soldiers are dying there because of IEDs. And currently, we are a sole source contractor for the Army, so they can add more funding to it without any competitive bidding. So we're in a great shape there. And they're also trying to bring joint program with the Navy, because Navy is also trying to do uh, logistics, solve the logistics problem from ship to ship and ship to shore type applications. We had a good fit for that as well. And, and so just to be clear, though, single source means that you don't have to compete with anybody. Sole source. It means sole source. That's a technical term. Yes. No competition is required. So Howard Wallowitz and his boys in Big Bang Therapy, <laughs> Theory also had a big government contract. How they made something that went into space. H how long are these contracts? So our first contract was a year-long project, but the latest one, Army, could be a multi-year project. So one year is just for 
building a smaller scale production, but they want to plan for a large scale production as well. They could be a pretty substantial. Before you got a question. So the shape-shifting arms are a really clever idea, and you look at it and say, how come I didn't think about it, which, which is a good sign. How protected is that? What stops me from doing something very similar? IP. Oh, just last week, we got a patent awarded for the European market. A month ago, we got the patent awarded for this. Thank you. We got the patent awarded but for the US patent market as well. And we have sensing technology as well. There's a proprietary and our own software that nobody knows how it works. So it's very well protected. <laughs> The whole idea behind software. <laughs> great. Very novel. David. Uh, tell us what inspired you to start this business. Uh, my background is I'm from India, and I've seen how the bad the road infrastructure is when flooding happens, mudslides happen. People can't get their supplies, food, water, medicines. I think this technology has the potential to solve those problems beyond America and other countries as well. That keeps me going. It's a great answer. One question left. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Are you concerned about being locked in as a, a military supplier? No. So our technology is 100% commercial. We refused a contract that was given by Navy. We said, no, we want to assert our data rights. We sent it back. Our lawyers sent back our version, and they accepted it. So 100% of technology is commercial. Time for one more question real quick. We're good. Where'd the name come from? Oh. Okay, so hmm. it's Robots of Washington, W is Dubs, Robo Dub. So University of Washington is called UW. Our CTO is from there, so. That's what I think. That's, that's the name.